in the 60s, I went to a, uh, my, a sort of obscure school called Yale University. And I, I discovered something there that was very, very colorful, that had some very weird shapes and changed my personality, and that was LSD. But more important than that, more important than that, my uh, roommate at Yale University introduced me to Marvel Comics and the great work of Mr. Stan Lee. I searched him out, he was still living in New York, and uh, stayed at his doorstep. He gave me a script, he had a wonderful story. I wrote a script, we actually optioned it, and my entire career, Toxic Avenger, Troma, the Troma universe, the 40 years of Troma, have all been inspired by Mr. Stan Lee. And, and he never paid me a penny. <laughs> Very true. In fact, if you come to the Troma booth, the latest book that I wrote, Sell Your Own Damn Movie, guess who wrote the introduction? <laughs> Mr. Stan Lee. I didn't get paid for that either. I've been uh, living off Stan Lee. I've been. Yeah, I've been paying me a little. Troma. <laughs> Troma's been feeding off Stan Lee's roadkill for almost 40 years, and we did one. We we did one script together, Night of the Witch, which keeps getting optioned, and uh, but unfortunately. Somebody in Romania somewhere is working on that script now, isn't it? Finland. 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 Well, to me, they're all the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you get out of Los Angeles, every place is the same. Does Mr. Lee, in addition to uh, having cameos in many movies, especially Marvel movies, and trauma movies like Citizen Toxie, and the amazing parts of the family, does Mr. Lee uh, want to play a, a, a bigger part as he did in, uh, I believe, uh, Something Borrowed? The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk, sorry, I get him confused. The big thing is, all over Hollywood, you know, the columnists and the commentators, they don't talk about anything else except when is Stan's next cameo. It gets so annoying. Three o'clock in the morning, I get phone calls. I get emails. When is your next cameo? The whole world is so wrapped up in these cameos that it's a pleasure to talk about whatever the hell this is just to change the subject. <laughs> Dan, uh, there's an illustrator here named uh, Jason Palmer, he's very, very famous, and he's on his way here to present you with something very special, a very special award, uh, something special from the Comic Expo. He's on his way here, in fact, he's headed this way, he's a very strange looking guy. Hey, Jason. <laughs> Glad to see you. Mr. Jason Palmer. I wondered what I'd get an award Ace asked me 
to do something special for you. Who is so, you? Ace, the, 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 the Albuquerque convention. Oh, Ace. yeah. So, uh, Can so you the, spell Albuquerque? <laughs> yeah, <it's my> juice. <laughs> so this, this is what I came up with. <laughs> this is an honor to you. I love it. I always look human. <laughs> What is your favorite female character that you have created? And my wife. <laughs> uh, I haven't created that many I guess the She-Hulk, I created her, and then Sue Storm, I guess, and, and the Fantastic. I don't know, I never think of favorites. I love them all. I must tell you, I am my biggest fan. <laughs> Whatever I write, I look at it and I say, wow, that's good. <laughs> so I, I don't have favorites, I just, they're all great. I must be honest, I must admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel silly telling you this because it's such a stupid explanation. <laughs> it has nothing to do with science or drama or anything like that. I like words, and I like the way words sound together. And I like adjectives. Now, I could have called them, when I made them up, I could have called them the goblin. But I felt there should be a word in front of that, like I didn't just say Spider-Man, I said the amazing Spider-Man. I didn't just say Hulk, I said the incredible Hulk. So I wanted a word in front of the goblin. And I just figured GG, green, sounded good. If his name was Robin, I would have probably said the Red Robin. So that's the only reason he's green, because it sounded good with the word goblin. I, I don't have a big thing for the color green, I, it could be any color. Could have been the yellow Yahoo, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see the show. I saw a rehearsal of it before it opened up, before anybody saw it. And the rehearsal that I saw, and it was just about 15 minutes of it. They had a special little thing and they showed it. It was wonderful. But I didn't see the show itself. By the way, if I may say something, Julie Tamar, who the producers fired, is a genius. She is a great artist. And very often, producers screw up great art. And when Stan saw that show, Julie Tamor was still in charge. Would you consider a Navajo superhero? Why not? <laughs> we I, I made up an American, a, an American Indian superhero years ago in the Fantastic Four. Wyatt Wingfoot, that's right. And for some reason, when I stopped doing the book, they didn't use him very much. I think, I think they ought to bring him back and use him more. I'll talk to them. But I, I thought he was great.
by the way, if I may interject, uh, there's a little movie called Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, which deals with the Native American and the chicken zombie combination. You think of the trauma movies as simply comedic horror stories, but they have a message. There's an underlying message of brotherhood and tolerance <laughs> and love for our fellow man. And in his own way, Loy has done such a wonderful job bringing people together and making it like one world. And I think we all owe you a great debt of thanks for the philosophy that you have. Thank you.